My name is Erdinette Richards and a wife of Reverend Brian Richards. I'm a Filipina. I've been here in Australia for about 17 years. Sus, do gay na di di sa Australia. I've been here in Australia for 17 years. Ra time is running fast. And I would like to share about the nearest resolution. Happy New Year! In Visaya, maayong bagong tuig kaninyong tanan. In Tagalog, maligayang, man, manibagong bagong taon sa inyong lahat. So I would like to share with you about New Year's Resolution. What is New Year's Resolution? It's a promise to do something differently in the New Year or commitment to yourself and to God to make a better person on this year, year 2022. In Psalms 37, 5, it says, Commit yourself to God. Trust Him. He will do it. He will always be with you. He, will, he is the one who changed our attitude. Some people make a new resolution, hoping to change their lifestyle, change the attitude from negative to positive, to change or willing to quit whatever vices, kung ano ang mga vision nyo, kung anong vision nyo gusto nyo, ma gusto nyo makamit na mas stop yun. Whatever vices you are addicted for, God can change that. If you commit to Him, commit to yourself to God, and He will guide you. He is the only one who can change our lifestyle. Some people do more exercise so that you lose your weight. Like me, I'm talking to myself. <laughs> I, uh, I was 63 kilo, and now when I'm eating this, uh, in this yummy food from, from Christmas, I did have a shepherd's pie, with uh, ice cream, cakes, and I put some weight. <laughs> and I said, we go, oh my God, I was 63 and now I'm 66. Oh, no. oh my God. And this is, I commit to God. And I, Lord, help me to change this. This is my New Year's resolution, Lord. I'm getting older. I want to lose weight. Just five kilo. Oh, I think I'm 66 now. So I need six kilo because my dietitian said we need sixty. That are healthy for me at, at my age. So I need to discipline myself, you know, and pray to the Lord that I will achieve that New Year's resolution. <coughs> walking is the best exercise. I did walking now. I started walking, and I told to myself three times a week. 30 minutes walking is the best for me. And I encourage my darling Brian to walk with me. <laughs> so, we need to discipline ourselves. God help us to achieve that New Year's resolution. Some people, we have new, uh, they might have New Year's resolution to save money so that they can buy their new house, new car, Spend more time with your family. In this pandemic crisis, lots of people spend more time with their families because of lockdown, because of restriction. And the family gathered together. Some people want to quit their vices. Smoking, drinking. But you have to surrender it to the Lord in order to achieve that wish. The New Year's resolution by quitting your vices, we need Jesus in our lives. More positive. That is New Year's resolution for me. I need more positive. Take all negativity, you know. We're talking about this, Ryan, God's creative power. You know, I encourage you to read this book. It would really change your lives. I changed my life with this reading this book. Most of this book is from the Word of God, you know. 
And words is the most powerful thing in universe. We have to speak positive in this new year 2022 in order to achieve our dreams. He says some Christians are failure in life because we confess the wrong things. We speak negative. We must more positive in this year 2022. Thank you, Lord, for that wonderful message Brian said about this. God's creative power will work with us. You know, if we apply correctly the word of God, it really works with us. So we speak, take out all fears. The biggest enemy is fears. Brian gave me one time a, a meaning of fear, you know. It says, some people has a fear of failure, fear of ability, fear of rejection, fear. But God inspired us. His word inspired us. In 2 Timothy chapter 1, 7, it says, this is my favorite verse. God has not given us a spirit of fear, but of power, love, and sound of mind. We don't fear in this 2022 because I believe that God will change the world. Will change the world if the people call His name. <laughs> it's in His word. It says, if my people call my name, and torn in the wicked ways, I will heal from heaven and I will heal the man. That his promise, that his promise before. But remember, Jesus is still the same today and forever. God can do everything. So we need to forgive. We learn to forgive. Ask forgiveness with the Lord and change our lives. Change to be positive. Change our lifestyle in order to achieve our dream. Hallelujah. Get rid of fear. Trust God. So Jeremiah 29:11 it says there that for I know the plans for you, not to harm you, plan to give you hope and to give you future. In Tagalog, I was saying, in Tagalog so that some Filipino doesn't understand English, I will translate into Tagalog so that this word is really good for us. It's, it's, uh, if you meditate this word, it will change our lives. It says, Sabi ng Diyos, Sapakat batid kung lubos ang mga plano ko para sa inyo. Mga planang hindi inyo ikakasama, kundi para sa inyo ikabubuti. Itong planong nagdudulot sa inyo ng kinabukasan, good future, puno ng pag-asa, you give you hope. That's the promise of God. As a Christian, our New Year's, our New Year's resolution might be, we need to grow in faith this year. Excuse me. Remember, faith is a substance of things all for, the evidence of things not seen. Faith comes from hearing and hearing by the word of God. So we need to speak, take an action. If we have faith, take an action. We need to trust God in everything we do. Number two, we must read the Bible every day. Set aside the Facebook first. We have to do first the Bible. Meditate His Word day and night and He will give us success. That His promise. Set aside 15 minutes each day. We need to pray to the Lord. Prayer is the most important thing we should do. It's, the, it's our weapon in every trials in our lives. It's prayer, it changes things, it turns the situation around. Whatever we do, 
wherever you go, God will protect us and guide us, guide us in every way. It's a great opportunity to start making positive in our lives. A spiritual New Year resolution might be is we need to seek God first. Seek ye first the kingdom of God and his righteousness and all these things shall be added unto you. Psalms 51 10 it says create in me a clean heart O Lord restore me within me. Life is not easy. Life is meaningless without God. We need Him. We need Him. Our hope is in Him. Our strength is in Him. He is the only one who gives us hope. I would like to sing the song is None But Jesus.
that you give us hope. You give us future. Thank you. I should smile at the camera and let them know that I got teeth. I looked at myself, you know, last week, and I think I smiled right. <laughs> what we got to sing about, what we got to shout about, we got Jesus in our hearts, hallelujah, and this is the new year. God bless you all. Happy New Year. I hope you had a good Christmas. And uh, the news of the world is we've got nothing to smile about. You know, the news of the world would would bring you down a little bit depressed and you might have uh, get some happy pills somewhere. <laughs> but you know, the joy of the Lord is our strength today. And uh, in the Word of God and in the joy of the Lord, we can overcome adversary, we can overcome uh, the principalities, the powers and the wicked spirits of darkness. We can overcome. But we cannot overcome if we're down and out and woe is me. You know, you got to lift yourself up. Lift up the joy of the Lord. Stir up the gift that abides within. I'm talking to Christians now. And, uh, you know, if you're not a Christian and you listen to my voice today, you can change all that right now, today, by receiving Jesus. Hallelujah. And I hope that what we say today will lift you up, that you will want this Jesus that we talk about. Hallelujah. Seek ye first the kingdom of God. And his righteousness I'll stand it for to the Hallelujah, hallelujah Hallelujah, hallelujah Hallelujah, hallelujah just occurred to me that maybe as people that were watching today because we're in a new year uh, people that be watching today for the first time and if that's good I have exceedingly joy over you because I have the opportunity to show you a gospel without preaching you a gospel Hallelujah. You know, we're at a time today in the in the spirit of God. I can tell you that uh, there's going to be a revival, a restoration bigger than we've ever seen in our lifetime. And um, I'm talking about a restoration that was originally given to the church in Acts two. Uh, 41 to 47 we talk about the church the Pentecostal church 
Hallelujah. Which started after the, the crucifixion and the resurrection, Jesus went away. He says, I go away and I shall, uh, where I go, you, you cannot come, you know, but you shall come and you shall know the power thereof. And, uh, you know, it, he said that he will return the same way he ascended, he will come back the same way. And the disciples thought, they'll wait and see, you know. And God had to send an angel to them to tell them, to, to, to remind them what Jesus said. He said, go to Jerusalem and wait until you be endured with power from on high. And so, this power from on high was to give us the joy of the Lord and to give us and to stir us up the gifts of the Holy Spirit, as many of them. And uh, I've never met a man that move out in all of them, but uh, there are people in the world that have all the gifts of the Holy Spirit and they manifest in every area of their life and in every area that is mentioned in the Bible, all the gifts can be in one person if they are apostleship, uh, like a, a church planter or uh, something like that. And uh, there are apostles of God today um, that have received the anointing of apostleship throughout the history. And so there are apostles today that uh, are not recognized, the same as those prophets today not recognized, but there are people that are self-appointed apostles and self-appointed prophets that we should be aware of. But anyway, today we're going to share on restoration as we have been sharing over the last few weeks but I want to talk about the restoration of the relationship that we should be having with God and so I'm going to start with Joshua to tell us about the Pentecostal church its foundations and, uh, and then we're going to go from there we have a nice song to go with that Joshua Thank you. So we better introduce ourselves. So my name is Reverend Brian Richards. This is my son Joshua, and he's going to read to us about the Restoration Church. Okay. <clears throat> Hello, my name is Joshua Brian Richards. I'm going to be reading um, the Faith Restoration Church, and then I'll be reading um, Psalms one. Remember to like, comment, and subscribe if you're on Vimeo, Daily Motion, or YouTube. If you're on YouTube, also subscribing, press the notification bell, and you'll be notified of every time we upload a video. Okay. Faith Restoration Church. A res Restoration Christian Church. What it means. We really need a restoration of what is originally given to the Apostolic Christian Church. Christian Church, at its root. The word church means a called out group. In the New Testament of the Bible, the term is used in two specific ways. A local church or single organized group of Christians. And two, the universal church or body of Christ. The universal church is made up of all believers in Christ. From the day of Pentecost in Acts to the end times of Revelation. Your local church is a visible and temporal representation of the universal church. Christian Church, its origin. The Christian Church was a mystery hidden throughout the Old Testament of the Bible. Later, Jesus first prophesied the coming of the first church when he spoke to Peter and declared, On this rock I will build my church. Matthew 6 and 18. Here, Jesus is making a play on words, since he earlier changed Peter's name from Simon to Peter, which means rock. The, sh the traditional view of when the Christian Church actually started was the day of Pentecost. 50 days after, pa after the Passover, 
during which Jesus was crucified. It was at this time that Peter gave his great sermon, and in response, about 3,000 souls were added to them, the apostles. Acts 2.41 This group of believers was first called the church in Acts 2.47, as God added to the church daily those who were being saved. Christian Church, its purpose. As a body, the ultimate purpose for the Christian church is to bring glory to its head, Jesus Christ. As the church brings honour to Christ, it also fulfills two specific purposes related to God's plan for the earth. One, evangelism to non-believers, and two, edification for fellow believers of the church. Among other things, the church is also known as the Bride of Christ and the Living Temple of the True God. Obviously, the church is not a building, a meeting place, an organization, or denomination. The church is a totality of all believers in Christ, regardless of denomination or meeting place. The entire, the entire body of believers is the church, and as such, the church is the dwelling place of God. Christian Church, become a member. The Christian church is comprised of those who have been redeemed by Christ, who died on the cross and rose again. They are justified by faith in Christ alone. They are not saved by false teachers, compromised gospels, by their works, by a building, or by a religious ritual. They are saved by grace through faith in Jesus Christ alone. We have all sinned and deserve God's punishment, a God's judgment. At God the Father sent his only Son to satisfy that judgment for those who believe in him. Jesus, the Creator and Eternal Son of God, who lived a sinless life, loves us so much that He died for our sins, taking the punishment that we deserve, was buried and rose from the dead according to the Bible. If you truly believe and trust this in your heart, receiving Jesus alone as your Savior, declaring Jesus as Lord, you will be saved from judgment and spend eternity with God in heaven. So now, what is your response? Next, I'm going to be reading Psalms 1 in the King James Version. Blessed is the man that walketh not in the counsel of the, unholy, of the ungodly, nor standeth in the way of sinners, nor sitteth in the way in the seat of the scornful. But his delight is the law of the Lord, and in his law does he meditate day and night. And he shall be like a tree planted by the rivers of water, that bringeth forth his fruit in his season. His leaf also shall not wither, and whatsoever he does shall prosper. The ungodly are not so, but are like the chaff which the wind drove away. Therefore the ungodly shall not stand in the judgment, nor sinners in the congregation of the righteous. For the Lord knoweth the way of the righteous, but the way of the ungodly shall perish. This song goes well with what is in this song is in Christ alone, and it goes well with what we have, uh, have been reading about. And so we ask Joshua with a deep voice to come and... We need, we worship with the Lord with spirit and truth. We're going to sing a song in Christ alone. Right. Uh, we transport here, sorry. <laughs> Hallelujah. In Christ alone, my hope is found. He is like my stand, my soul. His corner stood, he saw the ground.
but we just thought it was appropriate for what was been uh, said so far um, concerning the church and so we've been over the weeks talking about restoration and quite rightly so because um, over the the time of the church which is you know 2,000 years and more um, our calendar goes uh, 20 to 22 this year and so it's 2022 years since the calendar started and uh, so that tells us how long we are after the resurrection power of our Lord Jesus Christ so from the cross till now is approximately 2022 years so that's our calendar in case you didn't know <laughs> we all knew that but we don't dwell on it we don't think about it too much but you know we are a, a christian nation and as 2022 arrives we pray that every year would be a better year and uh, it would be a better year this year if we got rid of the pandemic and i believe there is spiritually we can overcome it and it will manifest in the natural realm you know that everything in the natural realm first started in the spiritual realm and therefore the spiritual realm we can create you know we we are creative beings made just like god and we can create in the spirit what will manifest in the natural and so we stir ourselves up we stir ourselves up with the joy of the lord we stir up the word of god within us and we speak the word of god Jesus said, my words are spirit and they are life. And as we speak Jesus' words, they are spirit and life. And they are creative words that will work for you. Proverbs 28, 18 says, death and life are in the power of the tongue and you shall eat the fruit thereof. So if you speak the word of God in love, and in power and in strength and joy the fruits of the spirit 
they will manifest for you. You know, you speak negative words and it's not long before your whole atmosphere is polluted with negativity and everybody who comes around you are negative and it, 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 it rubs the joy, you have no joy left and, and you go down the road of negativity and not creative at all. There's no creativity in negativity. But you have a positive attitude, you know, you ask employers, people that employ people, um, especially if they're a brief um, employer, you know, a brief uh, employee, they say, I've got a casual job for you, and uh, they would rather have somebody that is full of the life of God, in there, full of um, uh, positivity rather than negativity. They have learned, the world has learned this, that a, a person that has a positive attitude is more productive than those that have a negative attitude. And so the world has known this over the years, and how have they changed, how have they, I'm talking about worldly people that are not Christians, they know this. And, and, and where have they learned it from? They learned it from Christians. I learned it from us. But you know, if you're a Christian today and you feel like you've been had a kick in the teeth and you're, you're, you're down and out and, and you worry you know, about what's happening for tomorrow, it's time to get into the Word and stir up the Word that abides within and uh, stir up the joy of the Lord because the joy is there, you've got to stir it up. And um, what happens is... Uh, we got so far removed from the original foundations of the church that we need to get back. You need to come back to what the foundations are saying, how people repented of their worldliness and, uh, wor and their sin, and they need to come back to a repentance. Need to come back. To, to God really and uh, the need to some Christians have been Christian for a long time and they still don't know how to have the right relationship the right fellowship with with God with their Father God with the, the Lord Jesus Christ through his word and through the fellowship of the Holy Spirit through prayer and we need to learn these things again and those things that we have learned we've let go by the wayside we need to bring them to the forefront again and start being a doer of the word of God and not just a hearer even the people that hear the word of God they're still they're sluggish in their ways and they don't become doers of it and the the book of James tells us that, you know, don't be just a hearer of the word of God, but be a doer also. And this will bring forth the right fruit, and this will bring forth the blessings of God. We have a, a, a wonderful uh, book, little book, Charles Capp's book. It's called God's Creative Power That Will Work For You. I recommend this book to anyone and anybody who has one. They will know what I'm talking about as they take this book and they speak positive affirmations. Thank you. Uh, take this little book um, and speak positive affirmations. It will change the world. God's word is the most powerful thing in the universe today. You have the authority to give voice to his word. Many people have been defeated in life because they believe and spoke the wrong things. They have allowed the word of their own mouths to hold them in bondage. God created the universe by speaking into the existence he has given that same ability to you and to me. In, in, the, in a word form 
to be effective in life, you must speak words of faith. Every faith principle and every spiritual law and every promises of God was set forth from your own growth. He designed his word to put you over in life. Learn how to release the ability of God in words for you. For about six dollars ninety-nine, uh, you you can buy this book from Quorum Quorum Bookshop, <laughs> and um, and uh, we have a little stamp. We put our stamp in there, and saying where it's come from. And I want to send one of these to everybody if I could, if I if I could do that, but. Only you make it possible by your donations. And uh, if you're in a country where you can't get one of these, you just let me know and we'll get one to you somehow. Okay? And, uh, but you know, I got 8,000 people on my mailing list. Everybody requested one of them. I would be broke over, over, overnight. Uh, but you know, if God put that on my heart to do it, I would do it. Yeah. But I want God to put this on your heart to look out for it in your Christian bookshop. God's Creative Power by Charles Caps. And this will change your life Amen. forever. Yeah. And uh, But like I said, you have to be a doer of the Word of God. Yeah. This has got wonderful, wonderful creative power that will work for you. But will you work, you know, will you yeah. put it to work? And, uh, and work the gift. Okay, so I'm going to talk a little bit about the fellowship. We talk about restoration. We are the Apostolic Faith Restoration Church. And we've been talking about restoration over the weeks. Uh, and the very heart reason for redemption is fellowship. God did what he did because he wanted fellowship with man. God created man, created you and I to have fellowship. And uh, we can't have fellowship with our negative words. You know, people prefer positive people rather than negative people. And quite rightly so too because Every word that we speak, it becomes creative power that will work for you. If even the negative words will create negativity, mm -hmm. um, positive words will create positivity. And if you're speaking the word of God, then you, you, you are pleasing to God. You're speaking with faith. Man was created in the God class, so he can fellowship with God. The greatest honor the Father has ever conferred upon is to be fellowshippers with men. You know, that's a great compliment and that's the greatest thing that God has ever done and that is to put Jesus Christ by His Spirit on the inside of you. You know, I said to a man one time, a long time ago now, I said to him, when are you going to allow Jesus Christ to live his life through you? And he looked at me with fear and he says, we don't preach that in my church. And I said, well, that's why I'm not in your church. I said, I would preach that all the time. And, uh, you know, that really that is the essence of Christianity is allowing Jesus Christ to live his life through us. And uh, we are called Christians, or little Christ. That's what a Christian is. To be Christ-like means to have the anointing on your life, the same as Jesus Christ. Christ is not Jesus' second name. Christ is the anointing of Jesus. When you say Christ, or he is the Christ, you know, you talk about the anointed one. I used to say he is the Christ. 
meaning that he is the anointed one. He wasn't Jesus' second man. And so, in them days, your second name was your, your, your trade, you know, Jesus the carpenter, you know, carpenter's boy, you know, and, you know. so, and that's how you get, uh, I, I, I went to went to school with a, uh, a boy named Philip Plummer. <laughs> I found out later his father was a plumber, that's why he called Plummer. And so, that's how second names got started in the beginning. And so, uh, I hope that is true because we, my name is Richards, you know, we got Rich Yard somewhere. <laughs> right, yeah, so Richard, yeah. I guess my jokes are going over like lead balloons today. Anyway, <laughs> the greatest honor that God has conferred upon us is to have fellowship with, with Him. We cannot fellowship with animals. They are not in our class. We're not in theirs. We're a different class of beings. You see? Relationship without fellowship is like marriage without love. You know, I, I, <laughs> we often see that in a marriage that goes wrong, you know, that they, they've let go of the fellowship. You know, they become related by marriage, but then they let go of that fellowship, you know, they don't seem to fellowship anymore, and you'll find, you know, uh, the woman in the kitchen and the, the man in the other part of the house, and, uh, and they don't fellowship. You know, they come together when there's something need to be done, but they're not fellowship. And you know, as Christians, we can fellowship in the Word of God, and God blesses us. And, uh, you know, it's a wonderful, creative thing that we do when we fellowship with, with our Father God through His Word. And Jesus Christ was the Word made flesh. In the beginning was the Word. The Word was with God, and the Word was God. And this same Word that we preach was made flesh and dwelled among us as Jesus Christ. And now the Word wants to take on your flesh. So you become like Jesus. There's a beautiful scripture. Um, I forgot what it is. <laughs> I think it was John. Beautiful scripture that says, When Jesus returns, we shall know him because we'll be like him. And uh, so I'll be looking at John. Uh, Finder. Please go. I said find that verse. I thought you said. It's in John somewhere. John 3. But so I've got a new Bible. A brand new Bible for Christmas. And uh, i got nothing marked. <laughs> Christmas gift for my friend. Christmas gift from a wonderful friend, but I've got nothing marked, and so I can't tell you some of the things that I preach, I have marked, and uh, so I need to mark my Bible, and I'm not one of these people that has a brand new Bible and stays that way for the next 20 years. I have marks that I put in there, and uh, different scriptures that I highlight, and arrows going here and there and so when a Bible is well used like that then you can uh, you know that you are having fellowship with God so fellowship is the source of the joy and the peace and it is the mother of all faith you know I have a relationship with the previous reader, I'm the father of Joshua. But there's are lots of times that I'd like to talk to him, but he's got his head stuck in the computer, you know. And that's not um, fellowship. That is relationship, but it's not fellowship. 
And uh, so uh, lots of times, I mean, I hope that people can identify with that. We're having relationship because, you know, your mother gave birth to you and, and you know, we, we prayed for for you uh, to be healthy and everything. And we have been all kinds of prayers answered because we're all in divine health and we have prosperity of the Lord and all that. So God's answering our prayers, but we need to have the right kind of fellowship with each other in the Lord. Because uh, that's where you give birth to things, you know? And uh, your creativity is in the spiritual realm comes from fellowship with God. Mm -hmm. And so there's a lot of times that uh, we can, we are related. Now I have lots of relatives that I don't have any fellowship with at all because they are not, um, I can't say they're not Christian because they are believers, some of them, but you don't know they're believers because you never have fellowship with them, uh, you know, so you don't know. We are responsible for what we know, and uh, I don't know whether they're saved or not, which is sad. So, you can be related to a lot of different people, but unless you have fellowship with them, then you don't really know them at all. And there's a lots of Christians that uh, uh, they say they're Christian by name, but they don't have fellowship with God. They have a relationship. Uh, I've I, I seen a man study the, the book he was reading, he studied it out, and the next day he preached from what he'd learned from the book. And it sounded like uh, he knew what he was talking about. And it probably did, but it was all from the book. It wasn't from the big book, it was from the book he was reading at the time. And it was, it wasn't fellowship with the word. It was, that was called religion because he, he was only preaching from the book that belonged to a certain denomination, if you know what I mean. And that is not the right kind of relationship. That's not the right kind of fellowship you have with your relative, you know? We're related to God and therefore we should fellowship with Him and that people will know that you know God by the words that come out of your mouth. But if the words that come out of your mouth are religion, then you've, you, you, you've learned from men. It's a man-made doctrine. Uh, a lot of denominations, they preach out of their denomination the the the, the, the relationship is in their denomination. It's not really with God through His Word. And sometimes they think they're preaching the Word, they're not. They're preaching the doctrines that belong to that particular denomination, you see. And so that's not what I've been talking about. The fellowship that we should be talking about is from the Bible. You know, I mean, I went to a church when I was younger. I was born again, I believe, at 11 years old. But I, and, and the only one who would read this big Bible would be the priest, you know. And the, he would be the interpreter of that Bible and tell us what he says. And we would have another book that we called a missal. We'd learn that. And you know, when I was 11 years old, I could read and write Latin. And, uh, but not all the language of Latin, just what was related to the, the Mass and the benedictions and all of that, but not related to the Word of God. You know, I mean, it is related to the Word of God, but only bits and pieces 
to form a doctrine. So, and that's all I knew. I thought that I knew God because I knew all the doctrines off my heart. So I now was, you know, proud of myself that I, I could ring the bell and I could answer the priest in Latin, you know. And I thought I knew God. But when I was 33 years old, I mean, that was over in England, I was only a boy. And when I was 33 years old, I came into a Pentecostal church and, uh, and I heard the words that you must be born again, John 3, verses 3 to 5. And uh, I had this kind of Nicodemus experience, you know, in John chapter 3 and verses 3 to 5 you'll see that uh, it says that you must be born again. And there was Nicodemus, uh, ruler of the Jews, uh, teaching the same things that he should have been teaching, the same things as Jesus. And he came up to Jesus, he came to Jesus to ask him why it was different what he has and what he has. It's the same thing, but it's different somehow. What is it? And he says, Marvel not if I say unto you, Nicodemus, that you must be born again. He came out at night. He actually says in the Word of God that Nicodemus went by night. He didn't want anybody to see him. But he just wanted to know about Jesus. And he said, Jesus, I know that we're both teachers and, and rabbis as they call them and we're both teachers and he said rabbi i need to know what it is that you have that is different to you want to he says marvel not if i say unto you nicodemus that you must be born again and nicodemus said how can i be born when i'm old and go back to my mother's womb and be born he says no not that kind of birth what is Natural is natural, but what is spiritual is spiritual. You need to be born again spiritually. And so this is the kind of thing that I'm talking about. We need to look into this Bible and have the spiritual awareness, the spiritual discernment. And, you know, in Second Timothy 2.15, it says, You can study to show yourself approved unto God, not unto man. You see, the, the, the relationship that I first started with God, I showed myself approved unto men, not unto God. So 2 Timothy 2.15 says, Study to show yourself approved unto God, not unto men. You know, I was looking for man's approval for what I was believing was God. And I had man's approval. And I had recognition in churches as long as I stuck to their doctrines. As soon as I said something that was outside their doctrines, they'd jump on me and say, look, you can't say that. And I said, but I found that in the Bible. And I've been doing that ever since, you understand. At 33 years old, I decided that I'm going to be baptized. I was never full immersion baptized. I was done baptized as a baby, dedication, you know. We call that a christening or a dedication to the Lord. But it's not a baptism according to the word of God. You know, you'd be baptized. I wanted to be baptized the same way Jesus was baptized. So I got baptized the same way Jesus was baptized. I wanted to go to the River Jordan. But, you know, that's the other side of the world for where I am. So I couldn't go there. So I was baptized. Same way Jesus was baptized, according to John's baptism. And then later on I found out, wait a minute, there's only one scripture in the whole Bible that says, baptized in the name of the Father, Son, and Holy Ghost. There's many scriptures through the book of Acts, and that's where we're preaching from, the book of Acts. That, you know, in the beginning... In Acts 2, 37 and 38, when conviction came on the, the people that 
they received the Pentecostal experience and the Peter went out and the people and he started to preach about this Jesus that you crucified he's the one who's the Messiah he's the one we've been waiting for he's the one who's going to he's the Redeemer <laughs> excuse me <clears throat> And so they said, well, what do we do now? See, what do we do? And that's what it says in the scripture. What do we do? And he said, well, you need to repent and be baptized in Jesus' name for the remission of sins so you can receive the gift of the Holy Ghost. Hallelujah. I heard that and I thought that's a bit different. You know, to Matthew 28, 18, it's a bit different. But we'll let it go. For a couple of years I heard that. Until all of a sudden I seen in scripture baptism in Jesus' name. Baptism in Jesus' name. All the way through the book of Acts, baptism in Jesus' name. You come up to the Acts 19 and they says that there was Apollos and Paul that goes into Ephesus and they tell the people. Good that you received the Lord. I said, yes. Yeah. So, you know, we got born again. And uh, they said, well, have you received the Holy Ghost since you believed? And I said, Holy Ghost? Well, we not so much have heard there be any Holy Ghost available. And they said, yes. They received the Holy Spirit. Um, but to receive the Holy Spirit, they must be baptized in Jesus' name. And so they was baptized a second time. And so I had the same experience. And I said, I want to be baptized again. And they baptized me. <clears throat> and I come up talking in tongues. I had talked in tongues before that. And it was explained to me, yes, you were talking in tongues before that as a sign of repentance that repentance is granted I said yeah that's right because Peter was told by God to go to Cornelius' house and preach to those Gentiles and say you Gentiles can receive salvation the same as the Jews and they said we know you Peter we know you as a good holy man of God but the Gentiles are not chosen as Jews and we we need a sign from God you know God accommodated them again like a second Pentecost came on them and they all spoke in tongues and Peter says who would forbid the water now that they've been granted repentance see that he didn't say that they filled with the Holy Ghost he said, now that they've been granted repentance, hallelujah, the day, Acts 8, I think it is, 16, I don't know And uh, so they was all baptized, and even some religious demons came out of some people, and they was healed, the ones that needed healing, and filled with the Holy Ghost, and so there was, now, I've seen that in scripture, I've actually seen it in reality, I've actually seen many thousands of people being baptized that I could not be there for. I baptized in one day in Philippines, 220 people in one day, and I thought, well, that's great, but that was done every day, or every week, I don't know, but it was done for about three months just on one visit to Philippines. Approximately 8,000 people had names and addresses of where they lived who wanted to be baptized. And they were doing it for months and months after I left. Praise God. It's not the fruit that you have at this visit, but it's the fruit that remains. That's the real salvation. You know. And so we're talking about relationship but we're talking about fellowship yes if you're born again yes if you're filled with the Holy Ghost yes you have relationship with God 
and you're born again and you can seek his face but do you have fellowship with the right doctrines do you have fellowship with the the right author of the word you know and I was surprised, I went to Kurang the other day, I went to Kurang and I was surprised at how many different translations of the Bible there was. I thought, oh, I was really blown away and I thought, wow, this is amazing. And you know, the King James Version was one of the first and I still think it's one of the best because it's easy to remember, you know. It is anointed of God, the Bible I'm talking about, the translation, the King James Version, is anointed by God in such a way that now this Bible is quickened to me by the Holy Ghost. Quickened, make alive unto me by the Holy Ghost. Hallelujah. And so I'm standing here, I haven't moved that Bible once. And yet I've been preaching from different pages throughout the Bible. Why is that? It's because it's the power of the Holy Spirit that is talking through me. It's a vehicle. I am just a vehicle for God. We're co-laborers with the Lord Jesus Christ and the, by the Holy Spirit quickening His Word to you, you can have words of knowledge, words of prophecy, words of wisdom, words that will be of the futuristic, you know. Why? Because you have right fellowship with God, the right relationship with God. Yeah. Hallelujah. So you can have relationship without fellowship, and sometimes you can have fellowship without relationship, but it's not very long before God will make himself known to you and that you will have a harmony going. But it's a struggle. Relationship alone is a struggle. You must have fellowship with the relationship. Otherwise, you just like you sit there and Joshua sits at the computer and we're not communicating. You know? Communication is the basis and is the essence of life. You know? Without that communication, there's no fellowship, there's no, the relationship is there, but there's no fellowship, and therefore you don't really know each other, you know. You can become weary in praying, but relationship and fellowship let the Holy Spirit help us as we come rested in Him. Most people are looking for something in the natural to put them over. Fellowship with the Father and with Jesus in the Word and the Helper is the Holy Spirit that will cause that fellowship to be so real that we know uh, this morning is an example I, I lost I misplaced my highlighter and my wife came out Ellenette came out she says I can put it in the pocket I said I haven't got it in my pocket I've lost it down here somewhere we're looking for it and then it goes back into the kitchen or, and I'm the, and her words, have you put it in your pocket? I went to the toilet, have you put it in your pocket? I went to the office, have you put it in your pocket? I thought, all, I said, no, all of a sudden I answered, there's no one there, but I answered and said, oh, of course I have not put it in my pocket. And as I put it in my hand, I pulled out, oh gosh, not only one, it's two there. <laughs> and so I was looking for the highlight and then, you see, that is called not only relationship, but that is fellowship. God was telling me, have to put it in your bottle. Hallelujah. So, you know, it's time to listen to God. 
And God uses a child to lead them, you know. It says in the Word that even a child shall lead you by the Spirit. It's easier for a child to be led of the Spirit than it is for an adult because we get into reasoning like I did this morning. Gosh, how ridiculous. They put it in the bucket. But that's where it was. In Hebrews 9, I'll finish with this. Hebrews 9, I might even turn to it because I don't even know what it says. Where we're heading with this is uh, Hebrews 4, sorry, Hebrews 4. Hebrews 4 and 9, my favourite scripture is 19, so I'm heading there, 16. Hebrews 9 says, Hebrews chapter 4 and verse 9 says, There remaineth therefore a rest to the people of God, that he that is entered into the rest has also ceased from his own works, as God did from his. Let us labour, therefore. Labour. In other words, of the work to be done. Let us labour, therefore, to enter into a rest. That is a work to be done to enter into that rest. Lest any man fall after the same example of unbelief. For the word of God is quick and powerful and sharper than any two-edged sword, piercing and dividing the joints in the matter and into the discerner of the intents of the heart. Neither is there any creature that is not manifest in his sight, but all things are naked and open into his eyes, into the eyes of him who you have, who you have to do. Seeing then that we have a great high priest, who's he talking about? It's Jesus. A great high priest that is passed into the heavens, Jesus, the Son of God, let us hold fast the profession, let us hold fast our profession or our confession. For we have not a high priest that cannot be touched by the feelings and the infirmities, but was at all points tempted like we are, yet without sin. So he's not asking you to do anything that he hasn't done already. You know? And you say, oh, well, that was Jesus. He was God. He was the Son of God and he was God. You know, he's, he's a man. Jesus came to us 100% man and he was 100% God. But he never operated as God until he rose again from the dead. You know that? Everything that Jesus did, miracles, the miracles, signs and wonders that Jesus did, he did it under the old covenant. The new covenant started after the cross. How much more then, he says, how much more can we do? You know, he says, these signs shall follow those that believe. In my name you go. In my name you go. So, let us therefore come boldly to the throne of grace to obtain mercy and to find grace to help of a time of need. That's the answer. Let us come boldly to the throne of grace to find help at a time of need. Let us therefore come boldly to the throne of grace that we may obtain mercy and find grace to help at a time of need. That time is now and it's never been more so needed that we need the grace of God. Hallelujah. Thank you Lord for your grace in Jesus' name.
Okay, you got a, a song to finish up. Maganda Maga, Philippines. In Australia, good noon, Australia. Our Facebook friends, my relatives, my families, or those people watching in YouTube, the Facebook viewers, thank you for continuing to watch our videos. So, people that are viewing today, uh, we pray for them to receive a special endowment of grace for this 2022 endowment of grace and the ability of God to do what we cannot do ourselves. I pray, Lord, that everyone would be a partaker of the grace of God today through your word, in Jesus' name. The word that goes forth with power shall not return void or empty. In the mighty name of Jesus. Say this with me. Heavenly Father, Heavenly Father, I believe in Jesus. I believe in Jesus. I believe Jesus died for me. I believe Jesus died for me. And rose again from the dead. And rose again from the dead. I accept him as my Lord. I accept you as my Lord. And my Savior. And my Savior. My healer. My healer. And my deliverer. And my deliverer. Come into my heart now. Come into my heart now. And make me born again. And make me born again. Uh, forgive me all my sin. Forgive me all my sins. And make me born again. And make me born again. In Jesus' name. In Jesus name. Amen. Amen. If you said that prayer, I'd like to hear from you. Send me an email. God bless you. Happy New Year! Yeah, photos. Like the four people. Oh, really? Oh, that's not bad.